Hey there yogis, I'm Nicole. Welcome back to My Yoga Time. Thanks for joining me today. Today's self-love practice is a combination of deeply restorative postures um, coupled with our yin poses, some long holds there, and also a little self-massage. So I'm using the Corp Massage Ball from the My Yoga Time cupping set. So you can use any massage ball that you have at home. If you don't have a massage ball, uh, a tennis ball, or even if one of your children has a handball, you could use that as well. Um, we'll also need the wall. So position yourself close to the wall. And I've got two yoga blocks. If you don't have two blocks, then get yourself a thick towel that's rolled up nice and tight. If you don't have any blocks, then certainly that towel and maybe a pillow as well. When you're ready, let's come to stand. So to begin with, we'll start up nice and high on the neck. So take the ball to the right side and just begin to roll the ball just down the side of the neck. So you can go up quite high to the jaw, maybe behind the ear. You might move a little more around to the back or to the front. There's really no right or wrong. Just doing what feels good. Change hands now, just bring the ball down a little bit lower, just working underneath that collarbone. It's also really good for our lymphatic system as well, help to promote that lymph drainage. And of course, if you feel that you need to go up again, do so. We're only here for another moment, so if there's a sensational spot that you want to spend a little more time on and do so. So for optimal fascial health, when it comes to rolling with the ball, we have a 10 minute window, which is the perfect time to stretch the part of the body that we've just been rolling. So from here, let's turn to the right side using the wall. Take your right arm back behind you. Ideally, the hand will be about shoulder height, a little bit lower is fine. Press the pads of the fingers into the wall, turn the eye of the elbow to face the wall, and then guide the shoulder down. Then you're looking over your left shoulder. Just a few breaths here. Again, this is a wonderful stretch for those lymph glands. It's also really good for postural correction. So if you have rounded shoulders, if you spend a lot of the time sitting throughout the day or just bad posture in general, then these stretches are something you should consider on a daily basis. And let's change sides. Roll out that shoulder. And we'll take the ball over to the left side, starting at the neck. Feel free to go up behind the ear, around the jaw. Applying as much pressure as feels good for your body. Let's change hands now, go a little bit lower, just below that collarbone. And it's quite often that it's not until we come to the mat for our yoga practice or we're using a massage ball that we realize how sore we actually are. And moving on from there, let's take that stretch, left arm up to the wall, right fingers gently press in as you look down past your right shoulder. Pressing the pads of the left fingers into the wall. Turn the eye of the elbow to face the wall and guide the shoulder down. And let's release, well done. So staying with the upper body, we're gonna take the ball now behind the neck and more so onto the shoulder there. So if you wanna roll up to the neck, you can, but most of the emphasis here is on the upper shoulder. And of course you can roll around that shoulder girdle as well. So you're leaning back onto the wall, 
and applying as much pressure there as feels good. So start with a little bit of movement. You might choose to go up and down, side to side, working around that shoulder girdle. So the ball is very quick to highlight that tension in the body, any spots that need a little extra attention. You can lower the ball down in your own time. Again, you might be moving sideways, up and down, or even in a circular motion. So there's really no right or wrong with this self-massage. And of course, the beauty of practicing this at home is that you can pause the class and take as long as you need to. And then of course, stay longer here if you need to. Otherwise, we're gonna bring that ball down, staying on the right side, but you'll come down now to your lower back around the hip and around the buttocks, that piriformis muscle. So, when you're ready, Leaning back into the ball. And for many people, this can be quite sensational, especially if you spend a lot of time walking or sitting, um, the now piriformis muscle there in the outer hips can get quite tight as well. So you might find it nice if you sort of lean forward or you might like to lean back and then turn to your side so you're getting into the outer hip. So it really is a bit of freestyle. Explore, do what feels good. In terms of duration, it's good to do this rolling for anywhere from 30 seconds through to two or three minutes. I'm gonna move over to the other shoulder now, up to the left side. Again, pause the class if you wanna stay longer there. And taking the ball a little lower now, moving down to the hip, the buttock. Well done, yogis, let's move on. Let's get to stretching out these shoulders and these hips. Come on down. You can take your ball to the side now. We're coming onto our belly, so have one block close by. And then we're crossing the right arm in front of the left arm. So this is quite a deep shoulder stretch. Um, some ladies feel better if they lay on a yoga bolster or a pillow, just elevate the chest, especially if you feel a bit compressed through the chest area. Otherwise, you can just be flat on the mat like I am. Right arm in front of the left. Make sure the forearms are underneath the chin and not further out in front. We want to walk the hands as far away as we comfortably can. It's as though you're tying yourself in a knot. Palms can face up or down and your forehead can rest on the block or you can turn your head to the side and rest the ear on the bicep. If you'd like to go deeper, you can bring the body forward a little and bring the forehead down to the mat. Relax the feet, the buttocks. 
Begin to breathe into the shoulders, that space behind the heart center. Feel the upper body expand as you inhale. Take a little pause before you exhale slowly. And let's lift the head up now, unravel the arms. We're gonna change sides straight away. So take your left arm in front of the right, using the block if you need to. Walk the arms as far away as you can. Either left ear to the bicep, forehead to the block, or bring the body forward, rest the forehead on the mat. Welcome the breath in the shoulders. And then as you take that deep inhalation, pause at the top, hold the breath for just a moment or two. And then exhaling slowly. And let's lift on out of the pose, unravel those arms. Just take the hands next to the body, palms to face up, and turn your head to one side. We'll take a brief rest. So our next posture is pigeon pose. Now, if you've concerns with knees and hips, you can just roll over onto your back and take a recline pigeon. So recline pigeon, you'll have your right ankle on your left knee. You could be here. You might have the block under your foot or you might take a hold of that leg. And of course, you can always prop up the head if you need to. So this is option one. Option two, pigeon pose, taking the right knee behind the right wrist, lengthen the left leg behind you, and then lower down. Now, of course, you can come down to your blocks or you can make a pillow with the hands. And softening any tension that may have crept into the jaw. So breathing into the part of the body that's caught your awareness. Breathe into the tension. Take a little pause at the top of the inhalation. And then slowly exhale the tension away. And if you're in your seated pigeon, coming up with your next inhalation. If you're reclined, just change legs straight away. If you're in your seated pigeon, you might like to take that right leg back. Brief counter stretch. And then whenever you're ready, 
change sides. Whenever your mind wanders off, just guide it back to the ebb and flow of your breath. Each inhalation creating space, pressing on those lines of tension. And breathing away that tension with each exhalation. And if you're in a seated pigeon, inhale your way back up. Take a counter stretch through that left leg. If you're reclined, really suppose and bring yourself up to seated just to configure your props for the next posture. So we're going to move into our supported fish pose and this is where I'll be using two blocks. So I'm going to have one block when I recline lined up under the shoulder blades, the other under the head. If you don't have any blocks, you can just use a rolled up towel underneath the shoulders and bring your head to the mat, or you can use a pillow and a towel if you need to support the head a little bit more. When you're ready, come on down. Now, if you've got the two blocks and you need to lighten the pose, you just simply go higher under the head. Otherwise, you can be at the same height. If your back is a little niggly, just keep those knees bent. Otherwise, you can straighten and relax the legs. You might find after a minute or so that you can naturally go a little bit deeper. Oops. And if that's the case, you can remove the prop from underneath the head. Let's have the arms out to the side and the palms facing the ceiling. Breathe into the heart center. When you're ready to release the pose, bend those knees. You can either roll off to the side, remove your blocks, or come halfway up to seated, then remove your props, and reclining down. Well done, yogis. Let's take our left ankle to the right knee, and then just gently start to rock those legs from side to side. You can start to gain a little more momentum maybe bringing the legs all the way down to the mat on each side. And the next time you bring the legs over to the right side, we're going to hold it there in our ITB stretch. So we want the left foot to be flat on the floor. If the floor is too far away, you can always have a block underneath. This is not a closed twist. We want the knee to move away from the body. You can use your right hand to press the thigh away or maybe you can reach the ankle. Left arm can be out to the side or above the hand. 
just relaxing the right leg and taking the breath into the side waist, the outer hip. And inhale back to center. Let's do that on the other side. Right ankle, left knee. Baby rocks to begin with. Feel free to exaggerate that movement, maybe coming all the way down on each side. And then whenever you're ready, legs coming all the way over to the left now, sole of the right foot flat to the floor or your prop. Left hand can prop up the leg or hold the ankle. And witnessing the breath moving the body. the body expanding and contracting with the ebb and flow of your breath. And when you're ready, bring those legs back to center, uncrossing the legs. Coming into Shavasana now, I'd like to have one block under each thigh. If you've got a pillow, you could always have the pillow behind your knees or the bolster. Or of course you can just lay flat. You don't need to use any props underneath the legs. Tucking those shoulders under and taking up as much space on the mat as feels good. And let's just rest here for a few moments. Softening the forehead, relaxing the tongue and jaw. Breathe in a little deeper, feeling the breath touch the nostrils. Swallow if the mouth is dry. And wiggling those toes and fingers. Following any urges to move or stretch. And of course, rolling onto your preferred side when you're ready. Taking as long as you like there, only coming back up to seated when you're ready to continue on with your day. 
I hope that you enjoyed that practice yogis and that little self massage. Um, the My Yoga Time cupping set is available for sale on eBay. You can see those details in the comments below. If you have any class requests, please feel free to let me know. The intention of this channel is to cultivate your home practice. And if you haven't done so, please do subscribe to the channel. It's the best way to support free yoga on YouTube. Have a wonderful day.